Hello, ladies and gents. A little bit of a diversion from the Barker retrospectives at the moment to talk about something a sort of tangentially related, I suppose, in the sense that it's one of my interests and is therefore bound to be a little bit distressing and disturbing and unpleasant. I want to talk to you about this. Yes, fans of my uh, of this channel will probably know I'm quite a, quite a fan of the 40k universe, bit of a geek in that regard, and in many, many others as well. Video games, toys, comics, really much anything. Anything that's slightly deviant will probably catch my interest in some way, shape, or form. Um... I'm a fan of the universe and have been since I was a kid, since I was about, I think I was introduced to it when I was like six. Um, a friend of mine gave me a copy of White Dwarf. No, it would have been earlier than that. It would have been earlier than that because I somebody got me a, a Hero Quest um, for Christmas one year when I was like five, I think. And that was the beginning. But I didn't know that Hero Quest was associated with Games Workshop. I didn't even know what Games Workshop was back then. But a friend of mine gave me a copy of White Dwarf, and I think it was it was a very old issue. It was the one, it was one around when the original Eldar Codex, the second Ed Eldar Codex, was released, and that was the first big book that I bought. And the Eldar was the first uh, army that I collected. I still have a massive soft spot for them. I love the Eldar. Love the Dark Eldar as well, who are one of the newer offshoots of the race. Love them, but I like the Craft World Eldar. I've got a very big, big, big soft spot for them. However... My particular fascination, uh, my abiding fascination, has Kel Surprise always been with the forces of chaos, the darkness at the heart. I mean, look at me, look at me. I, what else could it be? Uh, what else could it be? I look like one of the fucking Kurgan or whatever, don't I? Um, I yeah, chaos. I love the darkness. I love the grim darkness of the 40k universe in particular. Not as big a fan of the Warhammer, what was the Warhammer world, which is now Age of Sigma, which is like lots of different realities all sort of yeah, crashing and meshing together. Not as big a fan of that. But I've always been captivated by the imagery and the the hyperbole of the universe that's what i like more than anything i like how over the top and exaggerated it is and i like the way that at least in the fiction it's been elevated from what it was i mean 40k and warhammer fantasy age of sigma they're just big grab bags of references uh, there's very little original in them as such like the dynamic of say chaos to the 40k and fantasy universe. It's essentially Lovecraftian. It's essentially Lovecraftian, but there is a very specific metaphysics going on there, and that's what I've always liked about Chaos. I particularly like the Chaos Space Marines. I've always liked them. Weep for me. I know the status of that army in the game at the moment is dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. We've got the oldest codex. It wasn't particularly good when it came out. It was just a rehash of the fourth ed codex, which is, was dreadful when it came out. Um, and it hasn't got much better since then. But there are things happening. There are things happening. The company has taken something of a, a new direction, it seems. We're getting all of the wonderful old independent, you know, the smaller games coming out. Things like Space Hulk, things like Necromunda, things like... Um, Lost Patrol, um, that sort of thing. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I, I must say I'm really impressed with the way the company is trying to put right everything that's gone wrong in recent, well, really over the last decade, to be perfectly honest, since the last CEO who had no idea what the fuck he was doing. But this, this is an example of the kind of thing that they're doing in 40k at the moment. They are really. This is not Gene Steeler cults are not a new army as such. The Gene Steeler cults are an old army. They they've been around for a long, 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 long time. But they sort of fell away. They sort of they were they, they disintegrated when the Tyranids came around because the Tyranids are kind of they're they're the army that the Gene Steeler cults are part of. The the, the army that they derive from. And the Tyranids became the main focus. But the Gene Stealer cults are really, really fun. I love the background to them. They're very interesting 
in terms of a gaming universe because they're not quite as expansively apocalyptic in scale or scope as some of the other I, I don't want to say evil armies because it, it doesn't really work in 40k like that it doesn't really work there's there are varying shades of deep 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 gray to pitch black in terms of morality and that's it really the most moral i suppose you could say uh, maybe the tau but even their expansionist in dickheads essentially genocidal dickheads who will murder entire planets for not conforming to a particular ideology or genetic template so what are you going to do you know i mean even the space marines who are held up as the icon of uh, of i suppose goodness in this universe of lawful good are cunts they are genetic supremacist xenophobic theocratic assholes who will murder you for looking wrong you know um so there's no real moral absolutism in this universe it's it's just it, it depends on it depends on which uh, you know where your aesthetics lie i suppose more than anything you've got various aesthetics of malevolence in the 40k universe that's what's so fun about it i mean the, the eldar the craft world eldar they they believe themselves to be absolutely correct and absolutely right and supreme in the universe when in fact they're completely deluded because they are the, the remains of a race that murdered itself um and that did everything wrong they actually gave birth to a new chaos god the one which i like the best by the way slanish thank you for that eldar thank you very much dickheads uh yeah they but and they're also completely xenophobic to the point whereby they are totally genocidal totally genocidal they they will massacre entire planets worth of other races to save one eldar life because that's what they're like they're cunts um anyway the the gene stealer cults the gene stealer cults they're not quite as as huge as some of the other armies and their scope and scale is entirely different they're very contained to particular spheres and worlds they operate within the imperium within the uh the imperium of man the great galactic empire that spread so far that it can't actually organize itself it, no e even the imperium like the high lords of the imperium don't know how many worlds are in the imperium they don't know what all those worlds do or believe or how they're organized or how they operate there are some so far flung they haven't seen anyone from the wider imperium for millennia they think that it's like a myth and they've mythologized it all they they refer to the spacecraft and whatnot as as angels and messengers of the gods and that kind of thing that's where the gene stealer cults operate they're sort of like the downtrodden masses they're the uh they're essentially what is the slave caste of the imperium i mean it's not the same on every planet but by and large people are indentured they they work in particular roles to the point whereby they're even sort of lobotomized or genetically altered or or have limbs lopped off and replaced with tools for mining or whatever there it's a hideous hideous situation and in that situation of course you get cults you get revolutionary um, organizations and bodies and the gene stealer cults the sad one of the wonderful things about the gene stealer cults is that they are tragedy uh, made manifest there is this wonderful so undercurrent of irony to them the gene stealer cults promise a release from this grinding tedium from the inevitability of slavery and death which is what the imperium ultimately offers um and of course what they get what the faithful of the uh, the cult brotherhoods get is devoured by the extra dimensional genetic monstrosities and gribbly hideousness that the gene stealer cults ultimately end up bringing down upon themselves because the gene stealer cults they worship the tyranids uh, who are they're just this ever evolving instinctive mass of biological weapons that don't seem to have any end game other than the utter consumption of every biological element in the universe that's what they do they're like locusts they descend on planets they kill everything they eat everything they even suck up seas and devour minerals and leave just lifeless husks and use that genetic material to develop new bio weapons to do exactly the same thing that's what the gene stealer cults represent they are 
essentially manipulated weapons for the Tyranid race um, who are designed to prepare a planet for their coming, to undermine local infrastructure, to undermine defences, and just to make the populace more amenable to being eaten. That's what they're for. Um, they're, anyone who knows the 40k universe knows what gene stealers are. Anyone who played Space Crusade when they were kids, which is what it's, it's most people's entry point, most people my age anyway, it's most people's entry point into 40k. Gene Stealers were a race in the Space Crusade game, and they've been around for a while. They've actually been around longer than the Tyranids, which the, the Tyranids sort of evolved from them. Um, the Gene Stealers are a particular substrain, or a particular biological weapon of the Tyranids, and what they're designed to do, as the name implies, they infiltrate uh, worlds and other races, and they implant them with their own genetic material, and eventually give birth to these weird hybrids, these not-quite-human, not-quite-tyrannid entities, which ultimately form the Gene Stealer cults. They're great fun. It's a wonderful army, and this is one of the best, the best codices that's been released for years. It really is. It's, it's fun. It's, the background is great. I mean, the, the, one of the problems with the 40k products in recent years is they're a bit samey there's a tendency to repeat a lot of material this is a it's well written it's really well written it's loads of fun to read it has a very definite ethos and atmosphere about it there's this wonderful undercurrent of irony to everything here there's a there's a horror element to them which is wonderful and the the wonderful tragedy of the gene stealers. You know, you have these people who are oppressed, who try to find something, try to latch on to something, anything, to help them get through the day, and they end up becoming enslaved to parasitic aliens who are going to eat them, ultimately. Even if they win, even if they get what they want, they're just going to be eaten. And there's lots of instances of that actually happening in here. It's quite funny in a gallows way. But beyond the background, you've got one brilliant models. I mean, absolutely stunning models. That's one thing Games Workshop does very well. A lot of the time, the models are very, very, very good. Um, but real character, a real sense of role-playing about them, not only in the background of the models, but in the rules as well. This is, this is one of those codexes that's just really well done. It's very beautifully balanced, it's not over the top, it's not impossible to be, it's not like, say, the Eldar are at the moment, the Craftworld Eldar, who I love, but fuck me, Games Workshop, what were you on? What were you on when you wrote that codex, the Craft World Codex? They are insane. You can there are certain builds in the Craft World Codex. Your sort of grab bike, two wraith lord, dark reaper builds that are almost impossible to beat. Certainly for my army. I mean, the Chaos Space Marines. <laughs> Good luck. If you're going to fight against anyone in an even slightly competitive environment, if you're going to fight against the Craftworld Eldar, with Chaos Space Marines, any version of them, best of luck to you. Best of luck. Because you're going to need some really lucky dice to win. Or to even not be totally embarrassed. While we're on the subject of the Chaos Space Marines, while we're on the subject, here's one of mine. Focus, fuck you. He's not done yet, but this is uh, Lysidas Sandros, who is the heavily, 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 heavily converted sorcerer lord of my severed angels, Slanesh Chaos Space Marines. As you can see, they're almost unrecognisable as Chaos Marines, which is what I'm going for. They worship Slanesh, they call him the Living Art. They believe that Slanash represents... Uh, the whole ethos is transcendence through transgression. And that that obviously also relates to their physical forms. So even the ones who are mutated sort of surgically cut and transform and alter themselves. So everything in my army is massively converted. Enormously, insanely, hideously converted. Including a couple that are sculpted from scratch, from green stuff. I'll show you them at some point. Um... But yes, I mean, at the moment, they are, they're relegated to being just a modelling and painting um, affair, because playing with them is, is, it's no fun. 
it's no fun. You, even building an army list with them is not really any fun. Even given all of the recent add-ons and additions and whatnot, it's just no fun. Because the parent codex is so bad, you end up fighting the codex. It's bizarre. It's something you don't have to worry about with this. This codex, it's balanced, it's considered. The, the army-wide special rules are great. They're really fun. They're fun to play against. They're actually fun to play against as well because you don't know what's going to happen with these guys. They have very particular rules relating to infiltration and ambush, which is where they excel. It means that units can disappear. They can just scurry away into bolt holes and you don't know where they've gone or, or scurry down into sewers and then pop up somewhere else. It's really, really fun. I imagine it's insane to play. I imagine it's... Uh, I've, I've fought against them, but I haven't played with them yet. Um, fighting against them is great. It is really, really fun because you, you have to modify what you're doing all the time. And also, they're not like Army de Jeu. They're not like, say, the Space Marines or the Craft World Eldar, both of whom are not fun to play against because they have broken codexes. They just have... It, Games Workshop have this thing... Well, rather, they had this thing of throwing all the very best at Space Marines and at Craft World Eldar. To the point whereby they're no fun to play against. Um, these guys are fun to play against because their weakness is that they're fragile. They're massively fragile. If you don't play them cleverly as they're supposed to be played, then they're going to get blatted. They're going to get blatted by more heavily armoured, um, better armed and equipped armies. Even Chaos has a chance against... The Chaos Space Marines have a chance against these guys, which is great. And it gives me hope. This this book gives me a lot of hope for the direction that 40k is going. Because if we can have a, a Chaos Codex or even a Chaos, um, some sort of add-on or supplement that is as well written as this, then fabulous. Fabulous. That, that's all we really want. You know, that would be great. That's all we really ask for. Something that's as characterful and as impassioned as this. Which, you know, this opens up the door for. If there's going to be gene stealer cults, there's no reason why there can't be a chaos cult army either. No reason whatsoever. I would, I think most people would go mental for that. As a sort of alternative to these, they would be great. You could even, like, make these battle brothers with them or allies. And you could have the old gene stealer chaos cults back again. That would be amazing. I don't think that'll ever happen in a month of Sundays, but that would be incredible. So, yeah, I'm just really pleased. I'm very pleased with this book. It's the, one of the first books in a long time that's got me really, really excited for the game again. Even though I don't play the fuckers, it's, it's exciting to see the direction that the game is going. Some of the more, some of the rumours out there at the moment about what might be happening makes me very, very happy. Um, it sounds like that Games Workshop have taken on board what's happening with Chaos, how people feel about the Chaos books, and are trying to redress the balance a little bit. Um, there's rumours that seem... That they're coming from fairly well-established rumour mongers who are always right. People like Sad Panda and, and Lady Atia, who are always fucking right about everything. They're like they're, they're like Eldred Ulthra, you know, the Craft World Farseer. They're always right. Or Ahriman. Always right. Just see into the future. Diviners is what they are. Diviners. Who are saying that this year, something we're getting is New Thousand Sons. One of the... One of those units has never been good. I mean, I can't blame them, their current state on games were any any recent incarnation of games workshop because they've never been good not ever they've always had great background they've always had wonderful background but they've always been a shit unit um and they're shit now they're really shit um but but it sounds like we're getting new kits for them, possibly new rules there's even a rumor floating around there's going to be new units of thousand suns that have close combat weapons and different weapon options and stuff and this has been floating around for a while, and if this is true, this is going to be fucking fantastic. Magnus the Red. Magnus the Red, the demon primarch of the Thousand Suns, in his demonic form, is going to be released, and is going to be a playable model in the 40k universe. Now, this it fills me equal parts with enthusiasm and dread. Enthusiasm because a demon fucking primarch. And Magnus... Magnus the Red, one of my favourites. I love Magnus the Red. Magnus is fantastic. He's a wonderful character. Um, Dread, because how do you represent him? 
how do you represent him? Magnus the Red is like, he's not only a demon Primarch, which is one of the most powerful demons in existence, one of the most powerful beings in the 40k universe. He's got to be a lord of war. He's got to be insane. To make him feel right, he's got to be insane. He's got to be a psychic holocaust on the battlefield. An absolute psychic holocaust. He has got to be the most powerful psyker. Possibly a level 5. Possibly even higher. If they really want to represent him, and this is mental, I'll never do this because it will break the game. Make him level 9. Make him a level 9 psyker. Um, I know it would be stupid, but it would be great. It would be just that would make sense. I mean, nine being the sacred number of Zeech and all that. That would be great. He would ha he has to be there. And he has to be the most powerful psycho in the 40k universe. Because that's what he is. He's more or less magic made manifest. So let's wait and see what happens with that, shall we? There's also rumours of just Chaos being totally redone in 2017 as part of the, uh, the Black Crusade. Um, campaign which is coming then by all accounts so who knows this gives me a lot of hope for that it gives me a lot of hope so let's see how things go let's see how things pan out but if you're a fan of 40k and you haven't bought this yet and even if you don't play them get it it's a really good book it's a really wonderful book it's a good read if nothing else